Uh, friends, uh, Swami Sohananda has asked me to speak on the direct disciples of uh, Ramakrishna. Uh, but old memories come to my mind. Some years ago, I was in the shrine. According to our ritualistic tradition, I put the Lord to bed and closed, about to close the shrine. It may be my imagination, or it may not. Shami Prabhupada was telling me, Brother Kiran, Maharaj has come. I am going to Thakur. The next, then after some time, I got a phone call that Obani Maharaj has passed away. So there is in the scripture uh, a, a passage called Amana Purusha Brahman Gamayanti Pur Gamayati or Gamayanti Purusha or Purusha Purusha, I take Purusha Amana Purusha A superhuman being comes and takes to the world of God. I believe it is the Guru who comes. And that was Sharon Prabhupada that said to me, if I can interpret in my own way that his Guru Maharaj has come. And take him to the abode of Sri Ramakrishna. And therefore, if we are to be loyal to the Guru, we have to be following the path which he has struggled. It is on account of the hard labor of Swami Prabhupada, my elder brother. We are all enjoying the fruits of his labor. And I am very pleased to see that his successor is carrying on the message with interest and with certain amount of success, if I may say so, because all of you have come to find something which you have missed in the world. In the world of churches, in the world of science, in the world of your technology. And what is that you have missed and you have, uh, have to some extent you have a little taste of that. I believe it is the touch of sanctity. It is the glow of renunciation. It is the value of leading a meaningful life which will introduce you to your inner depth and bring, if you are ready, the goal of all seekers of the truth called liberation in this very life. So it is my prayer, my wish, that goal cannot be reached so easily. We have to scorn delight and live laborious days. Renunciation is the beginning, is the middle and the end of spiritual life which flowers into realization of God in his personal as well as in his impersonal aspect. And therefore two figures come to my mind, the figure of Swami Vivekananda, who we introduced to the West, the Advaita, and Swami Brahmananda, 
whose disciple came into this country in the person of Swami Brahmananda, introduced through the eternal companion the charm and beauty of entering into communion with personal God. The Western civilization has been fashioned by theology of St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas. Faith in revelation was the key note to salvation. Augustine was first influenced by Neoplatonism, but he could not accept that path for some reason which I do not want to speak in my way now because I have not read very carefully. But what I find, the theology you have accepted, science you have accepted, what you have not accepted called mystical experience. Mysticism came to the West in the form of Gnosticism, but the Church obstructed it. Then, then it came in the form of Neoplatonism, of Plotinus, light of the alone to the alone. There also, I do not find any Neoplatonist in the West. Maybe in, in the schools and colleges, hidden corners of the Western world. The Western civilization is back into a deep crisis. I think, if, I, if you do not take it very seriously, the boat of Western civilization has sprung a leak. <laughs> <laughs> and it is up to us to give inch, every inch of our effort, every pound of our energy to patch up the hole and make it function beautifully. And so what Vedanta stands for, Vedanta stands for this inner life. If Vedanta stands for life of renunciation and detachment, I will not bring down the ideal. You may be scared that it will do you good. What is a renunciation I am speaking of? I am speaking that renunciation has two aspects. One is called the negative aspect. There you condemn the world. But I speak of the positive aspect. You renounce your false attitude towards life. This bhoga marga is bound to create called this obstruction, disarmament. Because it, 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 it creates kind of life of competition and struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. And who are the fittest? Who are, have power through science and technology. And therefore scientists are taking the position of the prophets in the Western world. How do I think that? Because scientists are talking about religion and talking about higher type of experience, but they themselves are not following the method of renunciation, meditation, acceptance of an illumined soul as a guru and trying to realize their true nature as eternally pure, eternally perfect, eternally Illumined. So first I have to say that yeah, the Galileo has to recount his view. The Bruno has to, has to die on this. Uh, but now what we want to bridge the gulf between science and religion. Uh, to me science and religion religion of theology. I am not talking of religion of personal experience of God. I am religion of theological, authoritarian religion of God. The Western mind has his own. And therefore, we find the, the scientists are talking about religion which they do not know what it is. They are talking about mysticism in some form or other. But in order to follow the mystical path, the objective method of science will never lead to that goal. Both theology and science, to my mind, come under the category of Aparabhita, the lower knowledge. In order to uh, have the Aparabhita, 
the paravidya. You have to not turn your mind towards the universe or God outside. Turn your mind towards yourself, towards your real nature. You have a Western mind, all these things. Uh, R means reality equal to nature. Plus, as comprehended by T, by thought. But uh, uh, my interpretation will be religion equal to M, man, as experienced by a, trend, a thoughtless state, transcending thought. It is um, uh, Descartes, Descartes has, when I was studying the, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral Mickle College, uh, see Descartes, I, uh, probably I read called Cogito Argo Sub, because he was a French philosopher, I thought it was French, but it is not, somebody corrected me, which is Latin. Because I do not know Latin or French, those are said to me. But anyway, I, I, I doubt, therefore I think, I think, therefore I exist. You see, I, I think, therefore I am. If I could meet Mr. Descartes, I will say <laughs> that you have, sir, you have put the, or Monsieur, or sir, you have put the cart before the horse. <laughs> it is not, I think. Therefore I exist. I exist before I think. I am. On that we are superimposing all the attributes of our thought. That I am happy or unhappy. I am a Republican or a Democrat. It is good to be Republican <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> so this I call Aparabhita. The higher knowledge is that by which the indestructible reality is not known in, in intellectually, but realized in a higher state of consciousness. <coughs> and what is that higher? It is called Turiya. And it is Shami Turiyananda, who actually uh, made his name very true. Mahaprabhu Maharaj, when you give any name, he will always say, go beyond name and form. That means the Turiya. Because it, Jagrat, Shapna, Susupti. There are three states, waking, dreaming, and the state of deep sleep. Three states will change. The experience of the waking state will be nullified by the experience of the dream state. In the waking state, we are realists. When you take the experience of the dream state, we become called idealists. Then when you go into deep sleep, we become almost realist. We do not know where we are. The three states contradict themselves. But the background of the three states, according to Shankara, I'm talking about about his Dr. that is his definition, that which cannot be contradicted. And that, that is the background consciousness. That is called the Atman, the real self. But I will say that it is three, according to Shankara, it is the Atman, but according to the yoga system of philosophy, it is a transcendental state of consciousness. And there, I, you, the revelation becomes meaningful. It is not revelation um, in the scriptures. Veda, Veda Bhavati. You have to go beyond the scriptures. Shloigun Nagishya Veda. All the scriptures, whether it's Bible or the Vedas, you, you, you have to transcend. Because they belong to the world of becoming. But you have to realize the world of pure being, which does not know any kind of change, any kind of causality, any kind of transformation. So anything that belongs to the world of time, space, and position, we call, belongs to the category of Maya. Most of the Western thinkers, uh, as far as I can say, I have not read all the, uh, the, uh, the books written by Western mind, but usually they use the word Maya as illusion. It is wrong. It is, Maya is not illusion. Maya is that world is real as long as your ego is real. Your apparent self is real. But the moment you, you transcend your apparent self through the spiritual discipline, moral and spiritual discipline, and realize the Atman, then you realize your oneness with Brahman. Brahman here is not personal God. Call it Godhead or the Absolute. So unless we can transcend the world of Maya, uh, you cannot realize your true self, which is eternally Pure, eternally perfect, eternally divine. Now, 
we will have that tradition that we call the tradition of original sin. You see? Therefore, you need a redeemer. You see, the fall of Adam, it is based on a, on a myth. Adam and Eve and the Eden Garden it is a mythological way how the absolute has become the relative, how the, the, the one has become the many, or the infinite has become. So if you accept causation to be final, you, uh, uh, then you cannot think in terms of Jivan Mukti. You have to think in terms of heaven. And so this original sin you see, uh, needs a redeemer. But when we speak of Sri Ramakrishna's Rabata, he has come to reinforce from his personal experience the message of the Upanishads. That's the machine, that are thou. In fact, one time, there is a kind of thing. There was a man in Bengal who taught his disciples, thou art that. So anyway, so Sri Ramakrishna is not saying when we speak about an avatar that he, he is trying to redeem us. He is only to give us inspiration to manifest our potential divinity. So we, but as you find, you see, when you are sitting in the, 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 the Hollywood, you have got a great stations, you see, where all the messages continue, messages given, and they have different channels. So Sri Ramakrishna first realized, you see, the, all the, the spiritual development that Dehobuddha Dasasmati, when you are a dualist, the creature and creator, that a concept will be valid and true when you identify with your physical being. But when you identify with your, your embodied soul, you are a part, then Ramanuja, you see. I am divine, you are the branches. Our father which are in heaven. That, that statement is true. Man travels from truth to truth and never from error to truth. So you, you find in a, as you find in science, that the, the, if I am to study science first, I have to accept um, the, all the Newton's theory of gravitation, gravitational theory. But when I become an advanced student of science, then I have to accept what we call the theory of relativity of, of Einstein. The time, space, both are relative. Although Kahn, German philosopher, also spoke about that, but mathematically, it is, it is Einstein. Uh, but Einstein did not accept causation to be relative because he, he was uh, true to his Jewish tradition, you see, creator. You see, in the book of Genesis, you start with the book of Genesis. We do not uh, talk about Ajatabhada, Mandukya, Gaurabhada, Ajatabhada, we are Genesis. Uh, uh, and now the uh, scientists are talking, uh, uh, Genesis uh, extends from Big Bang. But I ask, who gave, who gave the Big Bang? Yeah, 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 big Bang. Yeah, yeah. So whatever it means. Uh, so there is a cause. When you see something, there is a cause. Uh, that is Shankara calls, Shankara calls it, it is relative truth. Uh, anything that needs for this explanation uh, some cause or some kind of relationship between cause and effect, we call Nabhari. But the Paramarthika truth, according to Shankara, therefore there are two planes of consciousness. When you are in the relative plane, then you have to accept, you see, the, all the uh, theory of uh, 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 relativity. But when you have reached this, an exalted state of consciousness, you see, then you, know, for the max plans, you see, very close to the Danto and the max plans, uh, quantum theory, and also the Heisenberg's theory of uh, called uh, theory of indeterminacy. Position cannot give you certainty. Position can give you probability. You see, although the, uh, 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 Heisenberg takes the credit, but Gödel, Gödel, or then uh, Heisenberg, then the other scientists are also uh, uh, thinking in that way. Uh, but um, Max Born wrote to scientist, uh, to uh, uh, Einstein that I am now inclined to accept uh, Max Planck's uh, quantum. Then what I, 
what, what did Einstein say to him or wrote back? God does not play life. <laughs> How do you know that? I said, God does not play dice. Eh? Uh, even the, the playing of dice carefully, the power comes from God. God is the Atma, the real self. Sri Ramakrishna used to talk, talk about it just like a mass tear. You are searching for freedom, you are searching for happiness in, uh, in so many things, I need not to mention. But something is better than nothing. But you uh, go in this life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Will you be able to find happiness in time, changing multiple things of life? Well, when Jefferson makes the statement that happiness you can find when you discover your real self, that your real self is infinite, your real self is immortal, your real self has no touch of Janma or Mukti, life and death. So we find then that it is to teach this message, Ram Krishna, as it were. It, he was trying to broadcast this message, you see, not to science and technology, to personal life. And therefore, I have the privilege to sit at the feet of Maharaj, whose statement I call, tell me where matter ends and spirit begins. Our consciousness is singular, never dwell or plural. When we identify ourselves with the body, you see, Say, for example, when you say, I have a headache, what does it mean? You have a head, but you have no head, you have no headache. <laughs> it's so easy. No, it is consciousness. That is the point. Where identification must be not the, the appearance, but the reality. And that reality, it is the spirit of the Atma, it gives power to the mind to think, and gives power to the body to live. Yes. And that Atman, uh, there will be different opinions. Ramanujo will not accept Atman as all-pervading consciousness. Ramanujo will be considered finite, minute, uh, madhya also, other philosophers also. But Shankara being true to, uh, the, uh, true to, how shall I say, Upanishad, he thinks that the Atman is infinite. And you cannot apply the theory of possession to Atman. The Atman therefore uh, never dies. Uh, uh, I want to put a little bit of comment on that. Natasya rogam, there is no roga, I will accept no rogam, no disease, no jara, old age, or mrtu, or disease. Prakasya jogadni, kind of body made up of bhava. I will interpret jogadni mayam asariram. There is no connection with the, called the stula sharira, this body which to all compounded things are bound to the soul. But what you call the soul, you call sukshma sharira. When you say goes to heaven, what goes to heaven? You see, goes to heaven, the, uh, called the, the apparent self, uh, the, the mind and the samskara connected with the apparent self. The apparent self is something, there are two theories are there called bimba, bimba vada, and uh, or you call, uh, or you call it avacheda vada. One theory is called the, it, it, it is a reflection of the eternal sun. Another is called, it is limitation, is it? as space is limited. But whatever it may be, uh, coming, when you go to, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, Swami Brahmananda, he, he was a silent power. Uh, the articulate power was Swami Vivekananda. Although I, for the sake of it, um, uh, for my talk, I have said that Brahmananda was fond of personal God, but really he, 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 he was, that side was external. Internally, he was also an Advaita. So if Vedanta has to work in this country, I think it, it is the Advaita will bridge the gulf between science and religion, between theology and philosophy, between the, the, the statement which very often see the East and West or the statement which is very often made between the, the, this world and the next world. So for, uh, why has ac uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the West accepted what you call that helplessness of man and omnipotence of God? I believe it is uh, due to the, the uh, concept of the linear view of time. 
given by St. Augustine. And uh, also another uh, concept that comes to my mind is this Aristotelian logic. Because Aristophon was as a scientist, Plato was a philosopher. And all the philosophers after Plato have written on the footnotes of that is the statement of Dr. Whitehead. So uh, it is Aristotle we find that is working in theology. How do you find it? I find it this way that when uh, Thomas Aquinas came, uh, uh, Augustine said uh, it's all by faith, salvation by faith. But there, were, there is always a conflict between reason and faith. If you bridge the gulf between reason and faith, between action and contemplation, uh, between time and timelessness, then there are these. Uh, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas says that religion is valid in the world of phenomena. But faith is necessary because natural and supernatural. He makes a distinction between natural and supernatural. That religion uh, is a supernatural thing, and uh, faith alone can introduce you to the world of God, world of truth, beauty, and goodness. So now, the uh, first point I will say, the linear view of time, that time has a beginning and time has an end. You see, when I came to this country in the year 1947, you see, at that time I used to listen to radio. Yes, radio. Uh, but now I do not listen to radio, I do not hear, I hear television. You see. I cook my own food. For what reason? Because self-help is the best help. If you depend upon anybody, uh, you will go disappointment. Depend upon none in the, in the whole world. But here, uh, I, I am like a priest. The uh, uh, is taking good care of me. <laughs> so, but anyway, it is better because I did not know how to cook. That's the uh, uh, And then when I, I was alone, as to, uh, then going to a restaurant, uh, it's not possible, it cost so much money. And then in the devotee's house, and uh, sometimes it is, it is not your, uh, your weather is so good. And there were called rain, more rain, and more rain. <laughs> so I, I thought if I help myself, I will certainly uh, not so much time. In that way. So anyway, uh, and also, if you know something, you can offer to the Lord. Now I, I will be, uh, my task is to move the lawn, and when the puja comes, to prepare for rice pudding for Sri Ramakrishna. If I cannot get illumination by meditation at this time, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I try to lose the chance somehow or other. Somehow or other, you have to, <laughs> you have to get it, <laughs> get into your destination anyway. So now, what I want to speak to you uh, that uh, although I have said you see there is a leap, you see. Yeah, you see as the all civilizations of Swami Rishi, in that sense, because they are so enamored by this, well, the, of the development that science has revealed. And the scientists, as I have said, they become prophets, they are talking about religion and religious values. But the method should be silent life, holy life, pure life. And that is the method I call Christ, giving to his disciples. Blessed by the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So I think an avatar comes to inspire us to know what we have forgotten. As Swamiji has said, this life is a hypnotized life. An avatar comes to hypnotize us. So we are thinking in terms of all economic values, of social freedom. These things are necessary. But the supreme value of life is righteousness. The supreme value of life is to accept the life of renunciation for the sake of the beloved, for the sake of all mankind. Therefore, when you take your vows, it is not for self-redemption or anything. You take your vows, Atmanam Akshartam. I want to know my real self, which I have forgotten. Please help me. Atma Vidya Prakashartam. When you go to a guru, an living soul can be a guru. We must be so free of Brijina, of Kamahata, Brahma Vittam. We must know the essence of the scripture. We must lead a seamless life. We must learn exemplar and mentor. 
suppose you want to bring electricity here, you see, electricity, no good. Uh, but if you have got rickety wire and thousand volt in electricity, what, what will be? Where will be? For conservation. Similarly, the nerves must be strong. And therefore, Sri Ramakrishna taught the, the disciples that be strong by practicing renunciation and don't follow the path of enjoyment. That was for the children. So now I will speak about a little bit of meditation. So the, their first term called the, the, the power comes from Guru Shakti. That the Guru is the transmitter. And the Shishwa is something like the receiver. You, you must have a good receiving set. Your wavelength also must be uh, tuned properly. You, see. you must be Shamanashto Shadashuchi. Shamanashto means always alert and always very pure in thought, word, and deed. So that is the reason Sri Krishna, you want when he uh, gave any instruction, he, he, he transformed their lives. Transform. The transmission of power is for the sake of trans. A transformation of life. We do not create anything. This is scientific truth. We can transform. Heat can be transformed into light. Light can be transformed into electricity. Electricity can be transformed into uh, radio waves and so on and so forth. So this power that we have, we must use it in such a way that we can realize the truth of our divine spirit. So it's called Shachidananda, existence absolute, knowledge absolute, bliss absolute. In our own life, in our day-to-day -day life, in our behavior and conduct. And so Swami Brahmananda, I mean, I said I had to speak about Swami Brahmananda, but because they are, some say they are not all devotees, they are a mixed audience. And I, and so I thought, if I spoke about Brahmananda, some people say, oh, we do not know what Brahmananda is. So, Vishani Brahmananda, I can compare him with uh, St. John of Christ, the most beloved. In the fourth gospel, you find it, St. John, uh, St. John. And also, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word, was, the Word became flesh, that is the avatar. But what Westerners accept, they call the static view of time. But Time is relative, time is dynamic. It, 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 repetition is the law of nature. See. Any incident that has taken place, well, you cannot think it is a singular incident. Take, for example, a comet. See. It, is, uh, it came 75,000 years ago, and it will come again. People cannot say it definitely, but it will come again, maybe 65 or 75 or something like that. See. Similarly, if avatar comes once, it can come also another time. But we do not preach Ram Krishna as an avatar. Uh, for this reason, that it, make a, it may make a cult. Therefore, we preach only the Advaita Vedanta. And not only pre preaching, we want to try to practice as far as possible. And therefore, my memory goes back to Swami Turiyananda. I have seen with my own eyes a living example of Advaita Vedanta. But an operation, although that day I was not present, after his operation. Anyway, that I have heard from his Suti and from his. Smriti, this is my Smriti. Dr. Dudzapada Ghosh was treating him. This ordinary boil developed into carbuncle, carbuncle on the back. The Dudzapada, a devotee, asked a famous surgeon, he was going to Benares, did you kindly see Swami Turiyana? So he called him. I forget his name. To read the book, Shamit Life of Tune, that you will be able to find. Uh, then, uh, his operation was necessary, uh, but it, uh, he was uh, there in, uh, in, in the porch of his own room. Uh, then the doctor said that if I want to put chloroform, something like ether, uh, the doctor, uh, I don't want to be unconscious. Because they are saying the operation was successful, but the patient died. <laughs> yeah, because technique is all right. If they look to the only the technique. What happens to you? That was the difference. Yeah. So anyway, therefore science thinks in terms of facts, not of value. However good science may uh, do to us, but it will not give us any kind of glimpse of the immortal spirit. Because for that. The scientist has to ask this question, who am I? 
man who has to negate all the what we call superimposition. That I am a scientist, or I am a Nobel, Nobel Prize winner. We have to take the position of of, of a spectator, a witness consciousness. And nothing is not attached whether he gets or not. But anyway, my point is about Shabaturiyam. Uh, so here you find the the the, 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 the about the essence of Vedanta. Vedanta is nothing if it is just a uh, leaves in the world. Tarbanku. Uh, Tarbanku. Uh, the Tarbanku uh, he had. Then uh, Dr. Dudgapa, the assistant and all that. Uh, it is a major operation. Uh, then uh, she said, no, I will not undergo and so forth. But I believe he was, he, although he did not close his eyes, but he was thinking. So there are I have, I have said in my last talk, that are called the first kind of thought, which usually theologians give, which is called standardized thought. But reason cannot accept all this standardized thought, you see. Uh, because standardized thought asks only faith without reason. But again, scientific thought, I call it systematized thought, rational thought, which thinks in terms of the uh, logical way of presentation, rational presentation. But real spiritual life starts when thought become magnetized by coming in contact with an arresting soul, whom I call an illumined soul, Mahapurusha. Mahapurusha, you come in touch and you have a, a good, good receptive power. If your mind is sati, uh, it, your, your life will be transformed, your value will change, relative values will completely discard and think in terms of living for the realization of thought as the sole purpose of life. So, you, uh, so to, to the Ananda, I think probably he was meditating. Who was meditating was difficult for me to say. Yeah. But apparently he did not show any sign of meditation because he did not close his eyes. He, he was fully conscious of, of, the, of the environment. The operation took one hour. And uh, then, uh, afterwards, everything cleaned up and bandages were made. Then the doctor was away. She was an agnostic. So, uh, he, he, he could not believe it. The man said, uh, uh, without chloroform, could um, bear the pain uh, uh, of, a, uh, of a major operation. Then he said, You are like a spark. You are like a spark. I have not seen uh, any kind of nervousness. You have never cried. You never. Uh, complained for that. Then Kanturiyanda said, a Spartan is trained not to express his feeling. He feels the pain, but he does not express it. But I did not feel the pain at all. Because here comes the art of Taha. If your mind is concentrated on the immortal spirit, Shankara uh, speaks about that if a dagger is put on your you will not be able to know it. As it were asleep, you see. You asleep to your psychophysical being uh, and absolutely aware of your total being or call it your real being, the Atman. So, you, uh, 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 Brahmananda, Suryananda, and I mean, even uh, I have to speak about it. Uh, I was reading a Bengali book. It has not been translated. You see, when I went to Santa Barbara, I it is uh, Shami Vijnananda. Vijnananda. You see, I have seen Shami Brahmananda will accept uh, uh, medicine from the doctor, uh, uh, Shami Suryananda also, but not Shami Vijnananda. Vijnananda, one time, Shami Sharudananda, he had, and Vijnananda was in Allahabad, uh, and he had. Is, is you uh, anything? Uh, are you able to hear all this, or shall I speak to the microphone? Huh? My, uh, my, uh, then Swami Bigyananda uh, was in Allahabad. Was in Allahabad. Um, the doctor, um, the Swami Sharananda sends Swami Omkarananda. They bring him to Calcutta. You see. But he, if he determines something, nobody can change his mind. Even Swami Sharananda. So when Karananda came, he, he said, take lunch, and we are very glad to have you. But I shall end by a ticket for, ticket for him. 
there is a, a six o'clock train he has to go back. <laughs> so this stardom determination, like Buddha, Yashone, Shushote, Me, So, he, but when he became the president, this, this, uh, one of his disciples said, Shah Maharaj, uh, let us call a doctor. Uh, uh, the best doctor of Calcutta is uh, called the Sal Nijatan Shatta, Nijatan Shatta. I am under the treatment of the most capable doctor in the whole world, and so it's a Ramakrishna. So although Swami, he said Sri Ramakrishna, it is the Atma, the Parabrahma, that's why. So he, then he, he, he bore very patiently, and it is he who spoke about this. In that book I said, a, a, a man when he attains illumination, you see, he creates a spiritual joy, you see. Although he may speak a very few words, but these few words will ring a bell in the heart and response uh, of the student will come, you see. Uh, so the, uh, that is why Shankaracharya in his Viveka Churaman, Durlamam Trihom Evaitat Daiva Nudra Hetukam Manushattam Mumukshattam Mahapurusha Shamstara. These things are rare gifts of God. The human but but I have mentioned that it, when you are spiritually awakened, that kind of part is really a, a blessing of God. You must be awakened. The bhogavasana must go. Tyagavasana must come. Because you cannot then bhoga and, uh, and tyaga. Yoga, bhoga, samanna is not possible. In order to have union with God, you have to, uh, for the monks, a total renunciation. But for the householders, uh, internal renunciation, as far as possible. Renunciation is the key, is the key to immortality, the realization of God. And Christ comes to my mind. I was charmed by his life and message. Christ has no wife, had no children, no money in the bank. And that is why he said, birds of nests, boxes of holes, but the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. And his Christ to me, when I was a student there, I was thinking that he was like a Hindu wandering monk, going, he has no home, from home. At least Buddha says, from home to the homeless state. But I said, no home at all. But anyway, that is the, but he uh, also realized the, the Advaita, when he said, I and my father in one. That, that uh, idea, I not try, I is not Jesus, historical Jesus. I is the Atman. <coughs> Behind our history, so psychophysical we there that impersonal spirit. The same impersonal spirit one realizes in samadhi. Uh, samadhi is a state of consciousness which does not contradict reason but complements reason. Rahasdi Maharaj, when Ram Nam was going on in Balram Bhutta's house, you see, he was listening loud. Uh, and uh, 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 they were inspired, Bhavani Maharaj and other uh, Swamis were, uh, were inspired. Uh, so, uh, that Maharaj was absent minded. Then Swami Nirvananda, after Swami, after was Swami Nirvananda took him uh, to his room. Uh, he stayed in that state of condition for an hour. Then after that, he said, today Ramnam has superseded even deep meditation. Dhan Jagir Baba Hoyagal. This Maharaj, Maharaj uh, said. So we, if I uh, have to speak of also, that's the deadly Brahmacharya, as the last time I mentioned about Brahmacharya, I will not say that, but I will... Tell about him. Huh? <laughs> that for, uh, because he wanted 108 rupees. But I said, Maharaj, I, oh, yeah. uh, that's a historian note. note. But what I want to say, the Kamali Krishna, <laughs> the Kamali Krishna, because Maharaj, when I think of Maharaj, I think of the Vrindavan, Vrindavan, as the Lila Shahacharya, as the playmate of Sri Krishna. Uh, so, uh, the two rivers are very sacred to me. One is Ganga, the Angus. There it, I think of Ganga as the symbol of Dhyana, Advaita Dhyana, Advaita Dhyana. And when I think of Jumuna, then I think of uh, the Lila, uh, the play of the, of the Lord, uh, the beloved, the beloved, the Lord, Lord and his beloved. Companions, you see. So there's the Oishadjo and Madhudjo. If you want to think of God, Oishadjo aspect. That they, they, 
is always the absolute. Uh, so in, uh, I told those things when I went to Santa Barbara. That is, we are all surrounded by hills, you see. The uh, hill is the, is the symbol of Shiva, yeah? uh, Shiva, the absolute. And if you see the ocean, you, you have got the ocean also. Ocean is the symbol of the Divine Mother, Shiva and Shakti. Suddenly, the Maharaj, um, you, you see, mm, was fond of the, this, uh, of making fun, <laughs> very humorous, you know. Uh, but he was also brave, you see. He, he was uh, like a child, and he, he, he go into deep meditation, you see. Uh, that is uh, the reason why Swami Nidvanananda was instructed by Swami Shardhananda. So when I say something, See, I say from the rational place, and so you may make change. You see. But if Mara says something, he struck from super rational place. That, who, how can a man say religion begins with Nishti Parvakumadi if he is not established in this? From Rigi Parvakumadi, he becomes a Shahadi Parvakumadi. Then my Mara said, I cannot instruct when my mind goes very high. And I have to bring down my mind to a few steps. And then, then I can see. So I, um, Shani Shardhananda wrote about him, he was a great master, uh, uh, called Kamale Krishna. Thaku Ram Krishna uh, had the vision of Maharaj, before Maharaj came, that uh, Krishna playing with the ball, uh, on the lotus, uh, 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 lotus. Then he uh, 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 made it, composed the hymn, uh, uh, that means, Talindi Pulla Kamale Madhavena Priyarata Brahmananda Namaskutam Shadguru Lokanayaka Tali Pulla Kamale is a lotus, full of lotus. Madhavena, Madhav is Krishna, you are playing, uh, 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 holding the hand of Krishna. That, that is eternal companion of Krishna. Madhav, Brahmananda, Brahmananda, disciple of Ramakrishna. Namaskutam, I bow down to you. Shadguru, illumined Guru. Uh, 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 leader of mankind. Uh, now, in the convention time, Shardananda has to write a speech, you see, reception. A uh, speech of reception, he was the, uh, the general secretary. Uh, uh, Mahapurush, Mahapurush, uh, I did not write his speech, 1926, from Mahabhushu Mahabhushu's speech was written by Swami Nikhilananda. Yeah. But Nikhilananda came and showed to Swami Sharna, he said, go and read this one. So, uh, from uh, 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 President Maharaj, to Swami Mahabhushu Maharaj. Uh, then uh, when this convention was, uh, 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 was going on, um, Mahabhushu listened very carefully. Then after Maharaj, your speech was wonderful. Then he is a frank, outspoken man like Shiva. What credit there is in me? Dinesh, that is Swami Nityananda has written this speech. And Vasanta, that means Swami Paramananda has read out to you. I was just saying, this man, like any one of you. What credit is there? Now, now Swami Nirgata was going to write the speech of Swami Sharadana. But Swami Sharadana, although he was not very well, Diabetes. He said that I would like to write my own speech. Then he wrote that speech in English. He said, uh, gave it to me. He said, go, uh, go to Mat and give to Nirmal Swami uh, Madhavana. And he said, he, he is a good editor, let him edit. But after some time he called me. You see. Then he wrote that at the blessing of Sri Ramakrishna, then blessing of Swamiji. Then after he said, um, I cannot, we cannot forget to pay our tribute to Swami Brahmananda, the most beloved of Sri Ramakrishna, who, uh, who nurtured the seed which was planted. Although I am not talking, uh, you see, you have to memorize, but it is something of that, which, which nurtured the seed which was planted, plant, uh, which was planted by Swami Vivekananda and we are now seeing the development of that uh, plan. So anyway, um, Swami uh, uh, Brahmananda was respected by Swami Shardhananda, Swami 
Sivananda and all the direct disciples, desire, desire, because they call Thakur's son, the son of Thakur. I have heard from one Shami, the senior Shami, that uh, Thakur, Sri Ramakrishna brought um, Vivekananda for the whole world, and he brought Swami Brahmananda for his own sake, for his own son, the, the favorite, you know, but that does not mean that, uh, uh, you see, uh, Maharaj was very, uh, very kind and uh, said also when Shamiji went back uh, from America, uh, he first uh, bowed down to him, you see, that means the, the elder brother is still respected like the father. And uh, Shamiji also, Guru Bhaktarishu, that I also bow down to you because you are the son of our uh, Guru, Sri Ramakrishna. So uh, I, I, was, uh, I was present, when, although not at the same at the time when Maharaj um, had this kind of uh, the exalted state of consciousness. He, uh, he, uh, he called, uh, I want to see Sharad uh, Sharad Maharaj. Then he came, that yeah, you be present, I have to go. Uh, that so he, because one time Maharaj had um, uh, typhoid and Sharanda nursed him. Yeah. And so the, this time also he was nursing very carefully. He had first cholera and then developed into uh, 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 his old disease came back called diabetes. Diabetes. Even when he was there, he was full of fun. Yeah, yeah full of fun. Um, uh, he, he was taken from his own room to the next room, which is called the big hall. And he said, Mara Hati Lakpata, that even a, an elephant, if he dies, is worth one million. <laughs> because of ivory and all kinds of things. But Mara, because he was quite strong, quite. I, I, I saw him, but the Shivaks were there, they, they had to take care of him. Uh, so then he, Komuli um, Krishna, that was, that was the thing. That Komuli Krishna. That means, I'm holding the hand of Krishna. <coughs> then Yogin Ma says, Oh, Maharaj has known his own Sharupa. He will not go to keep him up uh, in this world anymore. So, but Swami Sharadanda died in place afterwards. So you see, Thakur took him. But what his message uh, is that I will be with you always, boy. Thakur is free also. Sri Ramakrishna is free also. Yeah. So another incident comes to my mind that is Babra Maharaj, Swami Pramananda. Pramananda. I met Swami Pramananda. I think it was Buddha. Then afterwards, is my time here? Yes, sir. Yes, time is 9 o'clock, but you take it. Yes. Uh, this is, uh, this is, I have to end it or something. Because through sadhana you cannot, the grace is necessary. That now, uh, there is a mantra shakti, as I say, the power of the mantra. If anything happens, repeat the mantra sincerely, honestly. It is a, something like a, an urgent call. Uh, or call it an unlisted number, call will come. <laughs> yeah, unlisted number to him. He, he will surely come. Guru, Guru Bhakti, if you have not always uh, used that. And second, I have said that is called Japa Dhyana. Japa, Siddhi, Japa. This is sadhana. You have to repeat the name and meditate in your heart. And through meditation, you get all the qualities. Because Jadrishi Bhavana Jasya Siddhi Bhavadi Jadrishi. Whatever thought will come to our mind. Uh, as the predominant thought will, will influence our life, our character. The man is lead by his thoughts. Yeah. And his thoughts will be a magnetic thought if it is based on the solid background of purity, holiness, sanctity of individual thoughts and outlooks on life. Uh, so, Swami uh, 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 Premananda now. Now, Premananda is uh, uh, they are called Ishwar Kotis. I mean. I do not understand that, but Thakur has said, uh, Thakur has said he has to accept on faith. Somebody asked me that, said, how do you know? I said that, uh, that Thakur is real. How do you know? Because it is our belief. Well, there, is, there is called the relics of Sri Ramakrishna, and every day is worshipped by sincere devotees. Yeah, Thakur. And I also I said, Prana Pratishtha. We have to pray. That kind of particular ceremony. At that time, you should forget that it is a picture, it is a living person. We are at the feet of Sri Ramakrishna. It is a great blessing to us. And we are living in the form of Sri Ramakrishna Rupa, in a sense. So there is a conversation between Vidyananda um, uh, uh, and uh, Shami, uh, uh, Mahatma Swami, Shivananda. So after death, where do you go? Uh, 
Mahavish Maharaj said, um, we go to Ram Krishna Loka. Then Vidyama says, every moment of my mind, I think of Sri Ramakrishna. But, and Sri Ramakrishna alone, in my conscious, subconscious, and a superconscious mind, yeah, we need not Sri Ramakrishna over here. Well, but then not what you have said is true. Is true. Yes, here we have that. So we must think that here Sri Ramakrishna is present. And he has called us. He has called us. And they are also is giving us a responsibility. As a tree is judged by its fruits, similarly our life must be transformed, must be integrated, must be pure and holy, so that you can touch the feet of God and become immortal. So Bhavara Maharaj was very pure, very pure. Uh, one time Maharaj said to one of our Swamis uh, in Puri that you have not given the message of ba Bhavara Maharaj. Do you know who he is? If he is, Look to the east, east look to the west, west will be there. It is a very embodiment of truth. So then we find then Babura Maharaj who was brought to Balram Bush's house. I went to his house. Oh, I have seen you. I have seen you. Yes, Maharaj. Are you M's grandson? I did not join at that time. I was a student. I was thinking of that. I, 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 out of foolish students, says, I am a Brahmin and M is a non Brahmin, I have no connection. <laughs> I should, and now I, 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 I said, then he said, then he said, your nose and the grandson of Mim's nose look very similar. <laughs> very, very similar. So anyway, then Bhagavan was very nice, give Prasad. That day I saw, uh, Bhavra Maharaj refused to take medicine. You can I only Charnamata, the holy water. Yeah, his Shabak attendant was on the said. They, uh, and he uh, informed Maharaj. Maharaj came, Bhavram Da, it seems you are not uh, um, taking any medicine. No, Maharaj. Doctor, you have seen Thakur? Thakur will follow what the doctor will say. Oh, your Thakur's representative, whatever will say. Then you, you take Charnamata and then take medicine. Then what happened uh, that um, the, after the next day or, or, or two days after, Bhagavan was the condition became very critical. It is 1918. Uh, they are called, uh, they call, it was influenza. They say war, war fever, war fever, you see. But influenza. Second attack was very uh, critical. Uh, uh, meningitis and so on and so forth. But Bhagavan was in Devgav, he was brought um, to by Mahapurush Maharaj, uh, uh, Maharaj was, uh, Balram was also. Then when it became very critical, Maharaj came, well, Bhavaram Da, is Thakur here, is Ram Krishna here, do you see him? If you say Thakur is there, then we'll have faith. It is to teach us, no, no. Uh, Then Bhavaram meditated. After he opened his eyes and smiled, and he said, Kupashi, I see him very deeply in my heart. Then he said, grace, grace, grace. It is due to his grace I have been able to realize him as the pole star of my life, the crest jewel of my thought, and the holder of the key to my destiny. Then Maharaj wept like a child. So we find this is the, the message which I, I mean, so called salvation by grace, what they say, it is that kind of realization. Salvation as grace, it, it should not be a mere concept. It must be uh, an experience. Jami vaishabhruti tema ladhya. We may call ascend of man, but descend of God in the form of grace. You see, it may be in the form of the Guru or in the form of wisdom. Yeah. But fundamentally, there is no difference between Guru and wisdom. Uh, uh, essentially the same, but the Guru is the symbol of uh, all the universal, yeah, universal spirit. And wisdom is the symbol of the individual. So, and so that is the unified field. It uh, means that when Kundalini is awakened, Manta Chaitanya comes, then the Guru and wisdom become one. And it is a Guru points out wisdom, merges in wisdom, and decide, ask the disciple to follow us, as Ram Krishna says. And what that experience is, it cannot be 
But you see, it cannot be understood by our ordinary mind, but it can be a felt experience which will charm the soul and uplift the conscience of the soul to a plane which is beyond thought and speech. But it is valid and true because it brings full immortality here and now to the to the individual who has discovered in the depths of his consciousness. I do not know how to express my gratitude to you for listening to me, but it is my privilege that I come here to pay my homage to Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother, to Maharaj, because for some years I was connected with this very centre. And at the centre has taught me many good things. And the devotees of the centre will always be in my prayer, in my heart, in my meditation. I can only say that I, my Guru, Holy Mother, has given me assurance and conviction. May, may Holy Mother lift your consciousness and bless you with knowledge and wisdom, with love and understanding. And also, may your life be a sacred offering at the altar of our beloved Master.